how much would it suck that even though your entire family is being haunted by a ghost, that you're basically the one being targeted and basically the one the spirit wants dead? Welcome in everybody, my name is Jen, better known as Anju, and you are watching super short stories of real haunted places. So today we're heading over to Tennessee, where in 1805, John and Lucy Bell decided to settle on a piece of land that overlooks the Red River in what is now known as Adams County. The family was actually pretty successful until about 1817 when things kind of started to go wrong. Starting with the sighting of a really large black dog in a field that, before John Bell Sr. could take his gun out and shoot at, completely disappeared. Then, one of John's sons witnessed an unnaturally large bird sitting on a fence. And then the youngest child, Betsy, started seeing a girl in green sitting on an oak tree. Soon after that, weird phenomena started to happen inside the residence, where the family would start hearing dogs barking and growling and fighting, and chains being dropped and dragged across the floor. Eventually, this escalated to physical manifestations and the children began complaining about their bed sheets being tugged off them in the middle of the night. The youngest child, Betsy, would be the primary target of these escalating physical attacks, pretty soon having bruises from all the pinches that she was getting and marks where the spirit was poking her with pins. Now, as often is the case with things like this, as word got out, many people started flocking to the Bell family home to witness these spooky phenomena for themselves. And it really seemed to strengthen the spirit as she started to vocalize. The first words that she said were, I am a spirit. I was once happy, but now I am disturbed. Eventually, she revealed herself to be a woman by the name of Kate Batts. And she claimed that she was disturbed because the Bell family had settled on cursed Native American land. Well, it wasn't long until Kate started having full on conversations with members of the household. She particularly seemed to like religious conversation, at one point even reciting word for word two sermons that were given at the same time, 13 miles apart. What's even more humorous and maybe a little disturbing about this ghost is that sometimes she would leave the Bell family home for a short period of time, only to return and share the gossip about the neighbor's activities. So great, not only do I have to worry about ghosts watching me shower, I have to worry about what they're telling my neighbors. Cool. So anyway, even though Betsy seemed to be the primary target of the ghost malice, it really was old Jack she didn't like, which was the name that she gave John Bell Sr. And it was actually kind of interesting because apparently she really took a liking to Lucy, even calling her like the perfect woman. That's some high praise if you ask me. Now, maybe the spirit was a little angry at John because he was 32 years old when he married Lucy, who was only 12. I know it's a sign of the times, but hey, still weird. Anyway, the Bell Witch, as she came to be called, seemed to make good on her promise as over the course of the three years that she was active, John started getting weaker and weaker and they didn't have a reason why. Finally, in 1820, he died from poisoning. The witch claimed this as a victory, even going so far as to interrupt the mourners by singing drinking songs. I mean, I guess trolling didn't start with the internet. Now, an interesting side note. Recently, a reputable psychic has come forward and claimed that yes, while John was poisoned, it was not the witch that caused it. It was actually a Bell family slave who was angry at John because he was unable to protect Betsy from an ongoing sexual abuse by a family member. Now the ghost hung around until probably middle of 1821 when she announced her intention to leave, but that she would return in 1828, a promise that she actually made good on. But by that time, John was dead, Betsy was out of the house, and Lucy and the, her remaining two sons refused to acknowledge the witch's presence. So she left. But where did she go? And where did she come from? Many people claim that the cave that's located on the Bell property is actually a portal to the underworld and that is where the Bell Witch came from. Now, if you're feeling brave, you can actually tour this cave. It's open usually during the summers and of course in October. 
It said that the best time to go is going to be at the end of the summer months and as late of a tour as possible, as the spooky phenomenon usually happen around five o'clock. For more stories like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and make sure that your notifications are turned on. Also, if you know of a haunted place, let me know in the comments. Until next time.